Are you the prettiest kitty in the world? Yeah. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? I know you are. I know you are, but what am I? You're my baby, that's what you are. You're my baby. Jasper appreciation. Look at <laughs> You're welcome. And guess who's back from out of space? I am alive. Yesterday was literally one of the longest days of my life. I didn't get home until eight or nine, I think. So we flew into Philly, as you guys saw, and then we had my friend who I've never met before, never met before, named Brandon. And he came and he drove like two hours to pick us up from Philadelphia. Then he drove another like two hours to drop Ariel off in Brooklyn. We stayed, we had Ravi's, we had Ravioli's, and we met her mom, which was really, really nice. And then from there, Brandon took me and drove me to LaGuardia because that's where my car was parked, as you guys may recall. And then from there, Brandon drove to my house and we hung out and I bought him dinner to thank him for his hospitality. So Brandon, you are my hero. And today, it's back to work, back on the grind. Uh, question mark? <laughs> Hi guys, this is a very close camera angle. I just got out of therapy. It was a really, really good session. I've been putting in a lot of hard work lately, as you may have saw from my last like therapy video. Really trying hard to accept my past and things that have happened to me and not guilting certain aspects of myself that enable me from loving who I am and the person that I currently am. My therapist seemed pretty impressed and next week we're doing EMDR or something like that. So what is gonna happen is I'm gonna be looking at like maybe a finger or an object back and forth, back and forth, and that's gonna work my like short-term memory, the now. And I'm going to talk about an experience, and in this case a traumatic experience, of my sexual abuse and molestation, which triggers the long-term memory, the stored away stuff. So what it does is it kind of manipulates the two aspects of how you feel about that event, because you're using like your short-term memory and kind of the actual event. So if I'm explaining this correctly, what my therapist wants to do is uncouple the traumatic event that happened and my feelings about myself that stem from that. So we're actively going to use two compelling parts of my brain to make sure that chapter is kind of closing and I feel comfortable with it and I am loving myself entirely and moving forward. So I'm not moving on. It's a continuum. I'm moving forward. So yeah, I am hungry. I haven't eaten it yet and it's 2.30. I'm so bad. My friend Brandon is going to hang out with me today and I'm going to go get some food or like a coffee or something. I had a lovely Skype call this morning with Ken. And I have two, three more Skype calls left for the month of October. And they're going really well. And I have a live stream this uh, Friday, November the 3rd. So that'd be cool. Just lots of things. Busy, 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 busy. Feeling good about it. Feeling productive. I have so many things to edit. Like, I believe the first day of being in Toronto, Ariel and I, we shared footage. So if there's like B-roll, which is kind of uh, more cinematic footage, I think we had like 154 clips just in that one day and we were there for four so you can only imagine everything that i have to sift through put together some sort of storyboard and understanding and dialogue of what the video is supposed to be uh, obviously you know go to toronto but how do you tell people to go to toronto without sounding like an idiot and just be like oh just go there because i'm being paid let's go there because it's amazing truly toronto was amazing it's a beautiful city it's one of the gayest cities i've ever been to to the point where like the neighborhood's shrinking i don't know if i said this i'm sorry if i'm repeating myself but there's really no need which is another question how do you feel about members only clubs where only gay people are allowed to go into clubs and not straight people are the safe spaces for the lgbt community shrinking if so is it good is it good that we feel safe and comfortable in a normal normal heterosexual bar is it bad that we don't have spaces where it's completely inclusive what about lesbian bars they don't even exist anymore is that indicative of the gay men culture where people indulge in drugs and sex everywhere and that's another thing so i recently did my friends with benefits video and i've gotten mixed reviews my videos view wise are doing really poor i try not to let it affect me because i think the type of content that i'm producing is the type of content that I want to produce. And with Friends with Benefits, there was one particular person just completely going off the wall saying how 
I'm a bad influence and role model in the LGBT community and I should not promote promiscuity. First of all, I wasn't promoting promiscuity. Friends with benefits indicates that I need to actually know someone before the benefits aspect has. I'm not into booty calls. And more importantly, like, why do I have to defend myself? Why can't we just be sex positive? Because booty calls, people do it. And that's their prerogative. And as long as they're safe and, and they feel like that's a good decision for them, consenting adults will do what consenting adults want to do. So let's stop worrying about maybe what other people are doing and just kind of understand that we have different lifestyles that work for us because different things work for different people. And we can talk about it openly. You don't have to agree. I don't agree with some things that people do, but I accept it. And I accept that that's what works best for them. And I trust that they as an adult know what's best for them to do. Same with me. I'm in a good place. I'm having fun. I'm learning about myself and I'm meeting awesome people. Why are we hating? Stop sitting in that haterade, girl.